Han reporting from Miami Herald News Sports. We're here at the Nova Southeastern University Don Taft Center where the Miami Dolphin Youth Clinic is taking place. Youth and high school football coaches from around South Florida are listening and learning to Miami Dolphin head coach Joe Philbin and his staff. Let's take a look. Well, we went all out for you guys, but uh, you know, there's nothing better than uh, I can think back. This is, I think, going to be my 32nd year in coaching, and I have a lot of fond memories of you know getting in a car, you know, early in the morning with a cup of coffee and driving somewhere to learn football or to do something at night. You know, I can tell you that there's countless coaches that have helped me throughout the course of my career and still do to this day. And, you know, the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to meet, uh, you know, from different coaches from different levels, different schemes, different sides of the ball, uh, and just talk about a number of different things it has really helped my development as a football coach. So to be a part of this is, is fun for me and it's fun for our staff. I think you're going to really enjoy Get to know our staff throughout the course of this week. Uh, number one, first and foremost, they're, they're outstanding teachers. Uh, they're very detailed and specific in their coaching, and and they're good people. So uh, I would encourage you once you know as, when they're done speaking, certainly feel free to ask as many questions as possible, and also spend some time getting to know them a little bit. And I'm sure they're the type of people. Uh, they're coaches just like you. We we spent a lot of time this off season trying to learn ourselves by studying other teams in the league, by studying ourselves, what we do, and finding ways to improve. So that, that's the beauty of football. That's the beauty of what we do. You know, it never stops. You, you get to continually look for ways to get better and make an impact and make a difference. And I uh, really want to, you know, commend you guys for the work that you do and how important your job is and the impact that you can have you already have here in South Florida working with young people. It doesn't matter. The other great thing about football is, and one thing I truly believe is it's all relative. You know, it really doesn't matter what level we coach at. And I've coached in college football. I coached for 19 years. I coached a lot of different levels in college football, Division Three, One Double A, uh, you know, the Mid American Conference, the Big Ten. A whole different, you know, a whole gamut. And then obviously onto the National Football League for going into my 13th year. And there, there's some, I think, universal things about uh, football that don't change. And that's the fundamentals. And one of the things that I'm uh, excited about uh, for you guys this week is, you know, throughout the course of the week, you're going to hear our, our coaches, you know, talk to you about the fundamentals that we believe in. Miami Dolphins. If you ever come to our facility, uh, in our meeting rooms, it's on our walls. And I'm not talking, you know, it, it's not complicated. You may not, you may have a better way to do it, and we, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to learn. But, you know, if you're going to play defense with Miami Dolphins, we got a way of how we're going to teach tackling, you know, how we're going to pursue, how we're going to get off blocks, how we're going to create turnovers, you know, uh, how we're going to block on offense, how we're going to catch the football, how we're going to run with the football, how we're going to run routes. I mean, the basics, elementary things. And I, you know, I share this with our players a lot. All the days after the game, you guys know the feeling when you watch the game film. I, don't, I can't think of a lot of games that I've been a part of that our team won because of some masterful schematic uh, game plan. It's really been about players playing hard, playing together, and, and playing fundamentally sound, playing like a team. And hopefully that's some, something, maybe we can spark some interest in, in how you guys teach your fundamentals. And like I said, you know, we can have, some, you guys can get some good discussion going uh, as we go through the course of the week. You know, I just, I really believe that, that coaching is teaching. And, you know, that's something that, for, I guess if I had any strengths in coaching, I think it's one thing that uh, maybe I had was that uh, I was a relatively good teacher. And, you know, my mom, was from, by her profession, was a teacher. Uh, my dad coached uh, Little League sports for 100 years. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the fun part of, you know, taking, you know, a player and, and moving them from point A to, you know, down the road as far as you possibly can. You know, when I came into town, 
I think within the first month or two, I went to I went to Mass over at St. David's, and I was just walking out in the back, and I was, I don't know, just looking at the bulletin board, just kind of getting acclimated to town. And it was kind of an advertisement for Catholic education, and specifically at St. David's, and I wanted to kind of share this with you. And it kind of ranked, it, it talked about, you know, a teaching scale. And it talked about, first, we're, you know, mediocre teachers. That, uh, you know, mediocre teachers tell their students what to do. They tell their players, and that's about it, you know. Uh, and think about it, I mean, you know, I don't want to, you know, make light of the analytics and statistics in football, but a lot of us, you know, you know, you got to put your heart and soul into your teaching, into your coaching, whatever it is. You know, I don't care if you're teaching science in school, if you're teaching run blocking your offensive line. Uh, and, you know, I think the mediocre coaches, and we've probably all seen them uh, throughout the course of our careers, you know, they're, they feel like their responsibility is just to tell the player, you know, hey, do this, do this, do that. Uh, you know, a good teacher, you know, not only tells a student what to do or a player what to do, but he explains it. You know, I'm a big believer in the why. You know, why are we doing this? You know, in, in everything that we do. You know, why do we meet as long as we meet? Why do we uh, lift when we lift? Why do we... Uh, let them out of the building when we let them out of the building. Why do we run the zone read? You know, why do we have five-man protection schemes? You know, what's the reason and the rationale you know, behind everything that we're doing? And I think that's important for all of us in coaching. You know, it's an important, I think, question for us to answer. You know, what, that's what we do for our profession as teachers, as coaches. Why are we in it? And, you know, I think as it relates to your program or your position within your program and you know, why you're doing the job that you're doing and more specifically in regard to the teaching of the players uh, you know be able to explain it give them the why if they, if they got the why it's going to you know their understanding is going to increase five tenfold without a doubt you know the very good teachers you know they demonstrate they know not only the why but the how, and they can show the player, you know, how to do it. You know, whether you demonstrate in a walkthrough, and then you go half speed, and then you go full speed. You know, you have to think of good teaching progression for the players that you're dealing with. And, you know, there may be people, coaches sitting in the room that are dealing with, you know, nine-year-old grandsons, right? I met a coach back there. Coach's his grandson, nine years old, right? Coach? Nope. Right? right? That's different than uh, what Roger's doing at, at Aquinas, right? It's different than what we're doing with the Miami Dolphins. But you still have to teach basic football fundamentals. You gotta, you know, you gotta be able to you know, tell them what it is, you gotta be able to explain it to them, give them the why, and also show them how, you, how it's done. Uh, and then the great teachers and the great coaches, they inspire. They not only you know, can do all that, all the technical, they have the knowledge, they have the passion, they have the communication skills, all that. But because they love what they do and they care about the people that they do it with, they're able to inspire the people around them to accomplish some great things. Can you share your overall thoughts on why you feel it's important for, for, for you to do this? You're going to touch on it a little bit in your speech. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, again, uh, I guess the older you get in the profession, you think back to the times and when you were a young coach and you visited different colleges, different pro teams, and you think about the coaches that spent time with you to teach you and help you develop as a coach. And so when you have the opportunity to do that for somebody else, it's, it's rewarding and it's good for us. Uh, it's good for us on a lot of fronts because, you know, in, in a couple of weeks our players are going to be back. We haven't been coaching for a few months. And uh, it, it's good practice for us, but really the bottom line is it just brings back a lot of good memories. I can think back to, you know, I could numerous, you know, two, three times a year for a lot of years. I'd go to various places, and uh, and people were just uh, generous and kind to me. And uh, you want to be able to pay back. How many coaches clinics would you see you attend? Oh boy. Of your well, yeah, you know, a lot of clinics, and then you know, sometimes I just go to a, a, a pro team where maybe it wasn't a clinic per se, but I'd go visit a specific coach, and he would take extra time, stay at the end of the day, let me go watch practice. You know, that's what we said to the guys here, and hey, you want to come watch practice, and, and uh, we're always here to help. We're here to, you know, 
you're welcome. Uh, you know, you're coaching football in South Florida, and you're making a difference in the lives of, of the young people here. So it's uh, it's important. What one thing above anything else do you want the coaches who are here to take away from, from the time they're going to spend here? Yeah, fundamentals, I think, really is the big thing. I mean, everybody has their system and their scheme, and, and there's a lot of smart coaches. I don't care what level of football that you're talking about. There's a lot of smart coaches everywhere. So, you know, I think obviously we'll, we'll get some – plays and schemes up there too, but I think most important is you know, how we teach some of the basic fundamentals and, and you know, obviously with the young players you're obviously concerned as we are with NFL players, you know, about teaching the game safely. What was your initial reaction when you were presented with this idea? I thought it was great. I was, uh, you know, I've been wanting to do something like this and it just seems like sometimes you're, you're so busy and you got this to do and you got the draft meetings and you got this and free agency, but, uh, you know, it's great location, it's a great venue, this thing's set up uh, you know, nicer than our meeting rooms are, and uh, it should be good, I mean, the learning and the opportunity will be outstanding this week. I want to monopolize all the questions. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. How much is too much when it comes to practice at the youth, high school, and college level? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I was talking to some of the high school coaches earlier, and I think they have 20 practices this spring that they're allowed to do with their with their players, which is roughly about the same, give or take a couple that we can have in the NFL. And so, um, you know, there's certainly strong commitment to develop good, good, sound football players here in South Florida, which is important. Um, and the coaching is good, the instruction is good, but there, you know, you have to have balance. I think there's uh, at some point in time, you know, it's good for kids to play other sports, play basketball, play baseball, track, whatever it may be. So I think there has to be balance, uh, like like there has to be in anything in life. How much of the fun factor should be incorporated into the practices at the different levels of playing? Well, hey, you know, football is a challenging game. It's a competitive game. You know, hopefully the fun is the chemistry and the relationships that you build with the, your teammates, your coaches, you know, your fans. Uh, all that, you know, plays a big part of it. And, you know, high school, the student body. So it has to be challenging to prepare the players because it is a demanding game. Uh, but at the end of the day, you want to enjoy it. If there's no enjoyment out of it, then they should do something else. Maybe get a job after school or something. You know? mm -hmm. I should tell my kids that. Yeah. <laughs> who, if anyone, comes to mind when you consider the things that you've learned about coaching now? Who comes to mind? Who taught you how to coach? Uh, well, you know, there's been a lot. You know, I've learned from uh, so many different coaches. I had worked for some great head coaches throughout my career. I went to you know, different camps. You know, I watched Chuck Noll coach. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers at their practices. You know, Hall of Fame type coaches. So I've been to a lot of different uh, campuses over the years in, in college and uh, many pro camps as well. And you just try to learn from all of them. And some that you know people wouldn't know have been very very helpful to. Do you recall any specific? piece of advice or tidbit that you may have picked up at a coach's clinic or visiting a team that stuck with you from that moment on? You know, I think you just have to be yourself. I mean, you have to know, you know, you have to know, as I said to this, the coaches here, you know, we all have to, you know, why are we in this profession? Why do we coach? You know, I think it's, it's, I can't necessarily give anybody else a reason uh, for them to do it. You know, I know why I do it, and I think it's important, I think, for all coaches to understand this is a great profession. You have a tremendous opportunity to impact, you know, people regardless of what level you coach at. So, you know, but what are the reasons, you know, so that you do it? And you know, I don't think any of us really got into it for the money or the financial um, aspect of things. Coach Philbin, how important is it for coaches at especially youth youth league level to become certified? Well, that's a new thing, and you know, certainly since uh, since I broke into the ranks. But I think it's house, it's great. I really do. I think it makes total sense. Uh, you know, I know my wife's a nurse, and I know she had to do you know continuing education things, medicine changes, technology changes, the game's different than it was. You know, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that when I got into it. But yeah, I think it's really smart. It just it's good common sense, and you know, we want people working with our young people that are qualified and competent. Okay. Thank you very much. Talk about describe how the idea of getting the coaches involved came about and how you presented to the coaches and their reaction and all that good stuff. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, one of the biggest requests that we've had as an organization is um, to do a football uh, clinic. And 
I was I had the opportunity to talk with Phil about the idea. And, he's, and, and right when I said it, he's like, you know what, figure it out. So I got with Jay Kaiser and. And we said, you know, we don't want to just do it small. And, you know, Coach Philbin's vision, really, he wants to do it bigger. He wants to do it where we don't turn down coaches. Everyone can come, and we can teach them the game, not just a cookie-cutter event, but where our coaches can be intimately involved. And so from the genesis of it, we wanted to make sure that this event was about what's going to best impact our coaches, what's going to give them the best opportunity to be better coaches, but then also, you know, extend that information that all of our NFL coaches have onto high school and youth football coaches, and that, that's, the, that's the heart of this. And, you know, it's, it's cool to see it kind of come to fruition tonight, um, to see our coaches, you know, involved. Like, you know, I'm a former NFL player, and I'm sitting here, my juices are going, because, you know, this is the same cut-ups that we did when we were in the classroom. So, you know, they're not sugarcoating it. They're giving them real football, and that's the fun part, to see, you know, the same things that we're instructing our player, the same thing Coach Philbin's instructing his coaches, and the same thing that we're giving these high school and youth football coaches tonight. What was the time period when you first approached Coach with the idea? Um, we talked to him about it uh, middle, uh, very briefly last year in the football season, and in January uh, we were working, you know, hard enough to detail and about six weeks ago. Uh, it really started coming together. Then it became an organizational um, heartbeat, literally. Like, you know, I can point every department in our organization played a part in this, from video to, you know, janitorial staff to, you know, you know, every every department had something to do with it because it was such a big project. It was fun to do because, you know, we're stronger together and literally the, for something like this to happen, everyone had to come together and, you know, if you look in the room, it's stronger together, um, sounds were up. And it's really about being strong together. This this is about how do we allow you know high school and youth football coaches have all the tools that they need to teach this great game that we benefit from on a daily basis. And it's been fun to see Coach Philbin get excited about it. It's been fun to see all the coaches get excited about it. You see them in the hallway. Hey, I'm ready. You know they hope they're ready for me. So that's been fun to kind of you know watch us kind of get together around the community and be able to leave this information with them tonight. And you, meant, you as you mentioned in your speech, more than a thousand coaches showed up. Obviously, quite the response. Yeah. Um, so right now we have over, um, I think it's so probably exactly it's like twelve hundred and something coaches literally signed up. Now you know that's it's a four day event, so yeah. you divide that by each room. It may not seem like it's a lot in each room, but it's a lot of coaches that we're going to impact. We can't we can't ever teach every single child and young man in South Florida. But if we can get every coach, now, you know, those 2,000, 3,000 coaches that we can impact can now go out and impact hundreds of thousands of kids. And that's our goal, teach the teacher. And then that coach can go out and, and train our young athletes in South Florida. And as you mentioned, you're hoping this is the first of, of, of yeah, a series. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, you know, now we're, we're working out, we're kind of ironing out the details. Um, you know, like already I see that, you know, something else was supposed to be five minutes turned into a 15-minute talk because once coaches start teaching and they're teaching to people who want the same information, you know, you can't give it to them in just a couple of minutes. So if you just saw our first, you know, you saw Coach Philman, he started talking, well, that was supposed to be three or four minutes. Well, that was a 10-minute speech. And every coach has been doing the same thing because there's so much information that they have inside of them that they just want to pass on. And when you have an audience that really wants to learn, it's hard to stop. So it's been fun to watch that. So I don't mind running over tonight because the amount of information that we'll be able to pass on to these coaches, uh, you're talking about transforming a game, transforming um, South Florida. And, you know, people wonder why South Florida has the best football in the, in the country. Well, a lot of it has to do with the men that uh, are teaching tonight. What if any uh, fundamental differences do you think needs to be exemplified between high school coaching and, say, the higher upper levels like college and professional? Well, you know, it's funny. If you talk to a coach long enough, they all say the same thing. I wish when my athletes got to high school, they knew this. And it all starts from Pee Wee. So it's all the same information. How do you tackle is the same way how you tackle in the National Football League. How to block is the same way you tackle, I mean, block in the National Football League. So it's really about getting the basic information. And then, you know, the schemes and what cover two, cover three, you know, four-man front or, or five-man front, all that stuff, you know, that's just little adjustments to the detail. But the, the, the base, um, you know, the, the basic lessons of how to play the game of football, 
you know, it transcends every single level. It trans, you know, you have youth football, high school football, college, and the NFL. It's all the same stuff. It's just guys are bigger and faster. That's the only thing that changes. So we're focusing on the basics. So when a guy, when a coach is able to walk away from this event, they're able to walk away understanding the game of football more intimately. Now, when they speak to a young man, like Coach said, that you know, why should they know? Why do they need to learn this information? Well, tonight we're going to tell them why they need to learn the information and then how to instruct their, their uh, athletes. I think the game becomes safer. The game becomes better. Um, it's the greatest team sport in the world, that, and I believe that if a young man or woman plays football, it's the only sport where you can't have one dominant person be successful. You need to have 12 people, I mean, I'm sorry, 11 people, <laughs> 11 people, <laughs> you need 11 people at the same time working in the same direction, and every CEO in the country wish they had you know, every person that comes to work for them, those attributes. So our goal tonight is to make sure that, you know, they understand the heart of the game of football, learn the basics, teach young men and women how to play together, and you'll be successful. Any additional questions? Yeah, I um, What do you think is the best way for coaches to encourage their athletes to focus on academics as well as football? Um, I believe in the hook. You know, the hook is football. So I have a, I have a 12-year-old son and before he could play football, he had to read a thousand books. And he started playing football when he was ten. So, any and I coach you football. So I tell our coach, I tell our um, our parents, you know, when report cards come around, the hook is football. If if for some reason that hook is not catching me, they're not catching the academics, they're not doing their homework, they're not doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. We take football away. So the best way to get kids to focus on sports, I mean, focus on academics is using sports as the hook. And if they and if they love that sport, well they'll do whatever it takes to be successful. So that's what we do with a young man, whether it's our Dolphins Academy, our football camps, high school coaches, youth football coaches, that's what we teach them. Allow um, the allow the sport to be the hook. And if they can, you know, if they can get their academics, they get to play. If they don't, well they don't get to play the sport. Twan, how has it changed when you were little? Did you play your peewee too? I know you went yeah, to school. I, yeah, I started when I was five. So where did you play your peewee ball? I played here. I played at Lauder Lakes Vikings. So you were at Lauder Lakes Vikings, <laughs> which is a good program yeah, out that yeah. way. What, how has just the changed overall? I mean, that's going over everything, but just how has it changed when you were playing peewee with Lauder Lakes Vikings to just how kids are playing today? Knowledge. I mean, it's, you know, as, as we grow in our knowledge, we are provided, we're able to provide a better product. And if you see what we're doing with um, USA football, you see what we're doing with, you know, um, heads of football and I mean, uh, high school um, player development in the National Football League. It's all about knowledge. The more information you give coaches, the more information you give young athletes, the better they're going to be um, able to play the game. And I think that's the exciting part. If people always say, "Well, kids run faster and you know they they make tackles better than we did when we were younger," yeah, because they they have so much more exposure to the game. You know, they learn in a different way. You know, I didn't learn cover two until I got to high school. Well, we're teaching cover two and cover three on the youth level. It's not, you know, it's not gimmicky football anymore. It's, it's we're teaching the game of football, and that's the exciting part. I think the, the sport is only only going to grow. It's only going to expand because as we are able to give more information, um, the game becomes safer. It becomes more exciting. You have now we have more women playing football than we ever have before. Uh, we just started a uh, flag football league with a um, middle school flag. And we have, in every middle school in Dayton Broward County, we have middle school flag football, women's and, um, and boys' football. And now you have women's high school football. So the game's expanding, and it's only expanding because the more access you give people, the more value it plays in their life. Awesome. Thank you. Basically taught and coached at every level now. Uh, I've, I've taught K through 12. I even taught uh, in Division three college. And I've, I've coached junior high, high school, Division three, Division two, one double A, Division one, and now I've, I've spent the last four years in the NFL. I know I, that's why I look like I'm 100 years old, right? But any, I've been at this thing for this will be the 39th season, and I want to tell you right now, the young men that you coach uh, are put you in a unique situation because you will never be in a position where you will influence young people more than you can right now as a youth coach or as as a high school coach and I'll tell I'll tell you what okay 
when I was 10 years old, I had two guys that coached me. Uh, and one was, uh, his name was Perry Fame, and the other was Ed Carliglio. Uh, uh, Mr. Fame had passed away uh, years ago. Ed Carliglio and I still talk to each other, you know, once a month or so, since I was 10 years old. <coughs> Okay. Those guys, they coached our, my first youth football team at 10. We ran the single wing, if you can believe it. All right, But they taught us how to have fun. They taught us how to have fun. And I went on you know, and played high school football uh, for a guy named Ray Tully. Ray taught us how to be tough. He taught us how to be sportsmen, how to handle ourselves like gentlemen. But he taught us how to be tough, how to play tough, you know, how to be football players. And then I went off to college four years later, and I had a coach, his name was Jerry Schweiker, and he taught us how to love your players. He loved his players. He loved being around his players. He would do anything for his players, uh, you know, and he, he taught me how to love your players. So in each instance, I still, you know, I have pictures of those teams. Each time I look at them, I remember that these guys taught me how to have fun playing football. These guys taught me how to, to be a good sportsman and how to be a tough, you know, hard-nosed football player. And this guy taught me how to love my players. And I've been at it for 39 years. You know, 16 as a head coach, 13 as a coordinator, and the rest as an assistant. Okay, but that's the kind of influence you're going to have on these guys. What's it like being here at the Miami Dolphin Youth Clinic? It's an excellent experience. We're going to have uh, an opportunity to meet coaches from uh, the collegiate level as well as, as well as the professional level and have an opportunity to uh, learn from them where we are able to uh, distribute that information to our, our kids in the community. So it's, it's a great experience. What do you expect to get out of this clinic? Once again, I want to repeat that we are here to uh, pick up some, some techniques and tips uh, in order for us to uh, relay the message to, to our kids so they could uh, perform better on the field, not only on the field but off the field as well because you're going to learn some things that uh, on, on how to grow up a little bit, you know, and, and, and to conduct yourself both on and off the field. How important is it for youth football leagues to have coaches that are certified? I think it's very, very important. It's important that uh, um, our coaches uh, understand kids and give each and every child an opportunity um, to enjoy the game. It's uh, first and foremost, it's 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 more about enjoying the game and, and right, Jim, having that experience to uh, to learn Thank techniques, you. so tonight, they can build uh, friendships, uh, bonds, and, and have an experience that they'll never forget. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome.
At the Dolphins Youth Clinic here with Coach Griffin with Carroll City High School. What was it like having the Dolphins do this for the youth league and high school football coaches having a clinic? Uh, it was real. It was really informative. I'm, I'm proud to be here. I'm actually uh, real happy that the Miami Dolphins took the time out to give us some information. Uh, a lot of stuff we do know and a lot of stuff we don't know. And the game of football uh, is a very evolving sport. And anything that will help us uh, get these kids on the right track for our students and being more competitive and being successful students in society is, is a great plus. I was going to ask you because you guys are coaches, but you're developing these kids not only as football players, but you're developing them as young men and student athletes. And just how important is it to do that nowadays? Well, it's very important. Uh, and, and for some reason, the times are changing and, and the world is getting uh, dangerous and, and we use football or sports as a way to reach the kids to let them know that there is a uh, a, a way to be successful uh, through sports. Thank you, Coach Griffin. Not a problem. It's been a great day here at the Miami Dolphin Youth Clinic. This is Samantha Hahn reporting from Miami Herald News Sports.